the 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wrap this one up in green. And... Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of the Railcast Talk podcast. And we finally have some movement in the offseason for the Railcats. Uh, the Railcats have extended offers or extended their uh, contract options. They exercise the 2023 contract options. For basically everyone except Jackson Smith um, is the only one that was not on this list. Um, everyone, like I said, everyone. Say I, I just run through the names just in case that people forget or don't really look at the rosters that much um, and kind of give my feedback more on. Um, I guess I'll give feedback on most of the players. Some players, you know, they, they didn't they didn't really do a whole lot. Um, in, in the season injuries, that kind of stuff, um, you know, relief pitching, that kind of deal. Um, but the first one, uh, Sam Abbott, uh, obviously big power threat, uh, lefty, which the Railcats definitely need, um, a decent first baseman. Uh, sorry for my dog who decided he wants to dog, to, uh, bark at me. Um, you know, breaking the single singles, single season franchise record, not only, um, in the American Association, but the whole franchise in the general uh, on his part of it. So, you know, glad to see see him, that contract being offered back to him. And obviously for people that don't know, um, the to exercise the contract, um, if they want to come back, they will come back as a Railcat. Doesn't mean they will come back, but if they do, that's what that means um, in, in theory. Um, Ryan Campbell, uh, a halfway decent reliever, um, LG Castillo. Um, he uh, he's a little shaky in the field, uh, in, in my personal opinion. Uh, but that could change. That was just the the flaw that I saw last year with him. Um, but he definitely turned it around with the bat. I he was very impressive. He had the, that very short um, and 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 there to the season he was very he was on fire he was uh leading production in, in a lot of things that the railcast needed help from and and he provided that um i wonder if they will see him more in a dh role um which i will kind of get in later um with um wall raven kind of discussed that a little bit um edward Cuello, Coming back, he I think he had a pretty halfway decent year. Uh, Jack Eisenbarger, he's coming back. I thought he pitched very well for the Railcats. Um, you know, maybe maybe in that closed role. I'm not sure what you know who's gonna kind of fill that role. Um, that they're they're gonna kind of need that. Um, Chris Irwin's coming back. Or, well, his, his contract obviously exercised another relief pitcher. I, I said the pitching staff did. A very the starting pitching staff did a very good job last year. Uh, the bullpen was shaky at moments. I think it was more of a closer role that really hurt the Railcast last year. And so I'm I'm curious to see if they're going to bring someone back or get someone that can close a game out. I think they just truly need a closer and not so much a a, a jump around bullpen. Uh, the 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 starting the relief that that kind of stuff. So I don't I. I I'm just curious how we're going to wrap that up, how that's going to work out. Uh, bringing back Harrison Francis, I thought he had a really good year, another all-star, uh, along with uh, Jack Eisenberger. Uh, he pitched, you know, he was a little bit wild. I started to think he he started to, to tame his, his aim a little bit and became better as the season progressed. So I'm happy to see that, Oh, you know, offer extended. Uh, Nick Garcia, another all-star who was all-star at the beginning of the half of the year, and then I think he just started kind of fading. You know, maybe he has a little kickback, uh, rebound, that kind of stuff. So it's good to see him back. Sherman Graves, uh, a later pick, um, later pick up from the Salt Dogs. Um, probably going to be your first baseman role again. Um, not didn't see too much crazy of him, uh, but when he was productive, he was really productive. I know there was a little bit at the end there. It was kind of like a lot of people just kind of revolving around that first first baseman role until Abbott really kind of took that over. Um, so maybe he's going to be a DH role. I don't, we'll, we'll see how it all kind of plays out. I mean, it's looking like he's, uh, Lamar Rogers is keeping the core group of people. And that's, uh, that's another podcast I'll get into 
Um, I'll, I'll talk at the end about that. Um, and then Thomas Greeley, we saw him. He's probably, unless they bring in another catch. I mean, obviously going to have to probably bring in another catcher. Um, but he, I mean, he kind of stole the show a little bit at the end of the season. I think him and Jackson Smith were kind of on the same playing field. I think just Thomas Greeley has a little bit more pop to him. I think his, his arms a little bit better. Um, so it's just interesting to see how they're going to work on that one. Adam Heidenfelder, who another all-star pitched very well for the Railcats, a good starting role for him. Uh, Joel Hurts, um, didn't really see much of him. Uh, Daniel Lingual, obviously another all-star, uh, the shortstop. Um, you know, he was very consistent. Uh, well, he was very good at the beginning of the year, uh, the all-star break. And then all-star break, he kind of stayed, um, average it wasn't you know anything too crazy i mean at the beginning of the year i i talked about it multiple times that the offense ran through lingua um and then it kind of shifted gears a little bit to you know michael woodworth a little bit he started to kind of get in that going. i mean woodworth was very consistent the entire year um on that aspect but i think at the beginning of the year the offense ran through lingua he was able to drive people in uh, he was stealing bases. He was kind of all over the place on the field, this and kind of that kind of stuff. Um, I just think the biggest thing, the biggest complaint with him is probably his fielding, a lot of errors. Um, but that comes to the territory sometimes, and I think he'll just improve. I think he improved. Him and Woodworth's chemistry got a lot better um, there at the end of the year. So I think we'll kind of see that grow upon if they stick together. Uh, Trevor Lubking, um didn't see him. He think he pitched <laughs> one inning and he got hurt. He was a top 25 player in the American Association last year. They got hurt. So I was kind of disappointed not to see him um, being able to play, but I'm glad they exercised the contract. So if he does want to come back, this may be a good rehab assignment for him. And if he goes on somewhere else, I mean, he, he was a highly thought of uh, player. So obviously with that injury, that kind of hurt a little bit. Um, Lester Madden came in a little bit later. Uh, he is more of an LG Castillo kind of type. Um, I don't, not really fond of his fielding. Um, I know there was like three balls hit right to him that he just dropped. Like, but that's just, I mean, like I said, that's just something that players in this league, you're going to see what their strengths and what their weaknesses really are. And the way that Lamar Rogers is constructing this roster is around the offensive type of players and the defense kind of comes second. Um, but that's just right now, I think he has a plan in mind and I think this is just a building block. And I'm not saying that, you know, these, these players, cause some players could just have a bad year and they're just not, you know, a new stadium, new, new, new city, new, teammates that kind of stuff so i'm not fully jumping on and, and tearing these players down because I, I don't want to do that because i think every player like i said in numerous podcasts i want all these players to succeed there's not one player on this team that i want to look at and say i don't want you to succeed i don't think that's fair um for the players i don't think that's fair for the rail cancer i don't think it's fair for me to tell you guys that it's not i don't not I'm not in the realm of tearing these players down because they are competing for something. They 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 are striving to be better at the game of baseball and move and progress on. Uh, Jesus Mariaga, I you know if it wasn't for the visas issues and this and that, I I I couldn't see Mariaga maybe being like league MVP kind of type. I I just think he was very good in right field. They moved him to center. He played very well out there. He was hitting the ball. Um, he was being very productive. I mean, he came in and he made an impact to the Railcats right away. So I'm hoping this year that they are able to get everything they need and he can come out of the gate flying if he comes back. I Mariaga, listen, I, I got a I got a spot in my heart for Mariaga just because he wears 25 and I, I uh, 25 was my number growing up. So anyone that has the Number 25, uh, automatic, I, a magnet to him. Um, and on the plus side, he's be pretty good at baseball. Um, I'm hoping that he is, he he continues where he left off and maybe, you know, maybe hits, hits for more power a little bit. Um, 
you know, he hit a lot of doubles, not a lot of home runs per se, uh, but that power may be coming, and I would like to see him get a chance at affiliate ball because I think he is a good player. He's good in the field. He He's good at the plate. He has the speed. He has the size. I think he is a very overall. I think out of all the players that the Railcats have, I think he is the overall um type of player that you would see in affiliate ball and you know just watching him being able you know being able to play and his size and that kind of stuff so i i think if he starts off really good i think he has a chance at affiliate ball so we'll hope for the best um medina medina um another really pitcher i he kind of had a little bit of rocky start uh victor nova um and one of those other late bloomers that kind of took a role in um you know arm strength probably not the best but he was hitting at a high average there at the at the end of the year he was being you know he was pretty impressive um the reason why he stayed on the field was for his hitting ability um and that was just another role to fill um maybe just to kind of put something in place because of um wall raven potentially retiring probably retiring kind of deal but that's i'll get that discussion when i get to wall raven on this list here so i think that was probably the switch there why wall raven went more towards a dh role um than playing at third base that's where nova kind of took over um aaron phillips another relief pitcher that took a lot in uh jared price kind of came in a little bit of the end of the year i thought he was going to be the kind of closing role um he was kind of put in tough situations so um, I'm hoping to see more for him. I think he has potential just kind of watching him pitch. I think he has somewhat of some better potential, maybe a closing role or some sort like that. Um, Ray, uh, Ray and Santos, another one of those players that kind of lie underneath the, the radar. Uh, Nate Scatlin, he's another one of those that kind of came in, took over left field ish. Um, he has the batting ability, uh, fielding, kind of gets a little finicky i can say you know i can say this for most most of the players on the team their fielding was kind of finicky um probably besides um jesus mariaga and and woodworth i think those are two of our stronger aspects um on that aspect of you know i think they're they're the little bit stronger side of the fielding um elio serrano he also uh john sheik's very you know pitching the starting pitching role he was part of that core starting pitching that did very well for the Railcats this year uh Jalen Smith I'm pretty sure he was hurt so he didn't really play much Julio Vivas comes in a little bit later on um I thought he pitched very well um like I said the numbers in in, in the American Association that they're in and the spots they get put in sometimes don't um afflict or, or don't reflect on the players themselves um, sometimes, you know, this is, it's a crazy game. The claims changing and, you know, more people are hitting home runs. I mean, you just saw it even this year at the steel yard, the amount of home runs that were hit, you know, steel yards, a hard, hard, hard ballpark to hit home runs. And there was a lot of people doing it this year. So, um, sometimes those don't reflect the actual pitching ability of these players, um, that kind of stuff. And then, um, I'll skip over wall right for a second. I'll go to Woodworth. Um, Woodworth, very solid. Um, I would probably put him um, in the Railcats MVP realm, just the, the player himself um, of the Railcats, just because of his consistency. He didn't see a lot of peaks. He didn't see a lot of valleys. He was very, um, I, I even at that, I would say he probably saw more peaks than valleys. Um, but he was consistent. He played a lot. He played every game up at the All Star break. I think he had a handful of games off. Um, let me look here real quick. Um, you know, he he pitched. He he played a lot of baseball, and that's be to be that consistent without being injured and playing a lot of games. Yeah, it's a hundred game season, and I know a lot of probably look at oh well, MLB plays one hundred sixty two, blah, blah blah, this and that. But this is different. You know, with a lot of these players don't get rest and he was one of those players that really didn't get the rest uh, he he played 99 games all right hands down play, he didn't play one game 
Um, he led the team uh, with games played, right? Lingua was right behind him. So, and I, I think Mariaga would have been up there with um, Woodworth if he didn't have those visa, if he didn't miss like the whole month because of visa issues. Um, so, with that being said, I think Woodworth to me would probably be the team MVP. Um, just because of his consistency through the entire year and, and being productive every time he stepped on the field, um, that kind of stuff. So I'm glad to see him kind of coming back uh, if he does choose to come back. Um, then going into the big subject here, uh, Thomas Wall Raven. Um, like I said, I did remember, I did talk to him at the, uh, the last game I went to and he said he was basically done. Um, but this opens the door up to him. If he wants to come back, he can. Um, he hasn't officially said anything or it hasn't <clears throat> quite been official yet. And, you know, that's fine because, you know, if he's te taking a teaching role and he wants to do this um, in the off season or, or, well, when the school break, he could, you know, he may not be able to be there at the beginning of the year. He may not be able to compete for a championship. Um, but I think he would be someone that you could rely on, um, someone you could put in the field or a DH role to spare someone if he does come back just for that little bit because he'll be in the heat and the grind and, you know, he won't be potentially part of the, the bigger picture, but still small pieces like that can work. And um, I think he really started to show his ability at the end of the year going absolutely bonkers with the Railcats probably knowing that he's gonna you know he just he gave it everything he had on the field uh, especially on the plate he was very impressive there at the end great guy to talk to I I have the highest respect for, the, for Thomas Tom Wall Raven and if he comes back I can't wait to see him play again but if he doesn't I he heck of a player and I think everyone uh, should recognize that. And there's a lot of people on this Railcats team that are heck of a players. It's just about finding the pieces around them. If today you were to tell, you know, say if this was a, well, it's a professional team, I should say, but if this was like an MLB team and you were telling me what the core pieces were, I would probably tell you just based on what I see, your core pieces are going to be Michael Woodworth it's going to be Daniel Lingua. It's going to be Jesus Mariaga. I would probably throw Sam Abbott in there. Um, I would definitely throw John Sheeks in there. Um, Adam Heidenfelder in there. Um, I would probably put Nick Garcia just because he had that ability at the beginning of the year and he just kind of slipped, but I think he'd be part of that. Um, I think Harrison Francis would be a, a good core piece. So you're looking at a, a good handful of core piece players. It's now just trying to find what else fits and works. And I think this gives Gary, gives the Railcats a very good blueprint to work on. Um, I mean, when you look, you know, when I look at other contracts throughout the league, there hasn't been a lot of huge exercise contracts. Winnipeg is probably the only other one. Um, I, I guess even Cleburne so far, I guess there's a handful early on. Actually, that's pretty early on. I'm, maybe I'm, I'm mistaken. Um, just kind of looking, uh, just the rail cats were so late in it. I guess I didn't realize how many people actually exercise contracts, um, right away. And I not, you know, I'm surprised that, they are so late. I would have figured that they would have been one of the first ones. Um, but like I said, there's a lot that goes into this and, and that I don't completely understand. I'm, I'm hoping one day I am able to sit down with someone and they can really break it down to explain it to me so that I can understand it. So that way I can tell the story and that people that don't understand it, like I don't really fully understand it, will start to understand it. And that's just something um, that it, it's just not... Um, there yet um you know what i'm saying it's just not quite there and it is a little bit confusing changing inner leagues that kind of stuff um but yeah i i, I this is what i was kind of expecting them to do um jackson smith you know maybe a bit surprised i'm surprised they just didn't offer a contract to everyone but um 
it is what it is. And I, I if they have pieces here and it's just about jumping on those pieces and, and, and letting it be and, and going forward from there. Um, so transitioning into the next little bit, I was actually had a podcast ready to go. Um, I ended up watching the, um, the, uh, Lamar Rogers and a new story. I think it was called from American association. Uh, they did a little documentary and I just, I was able to sit down and actually watch it. Um, and I will have a podcast on, on that alone that was like a filler podcast but i you know november 2nd i know it's the fourth i just did there was nothing on social media um american association didn't tweet anything out so railcast didn't tweet anything out so i was kind of like thrown off guard when when i was told that hey the, this is the people they exercise i'm like oh crap i better get on this um so i'm happy that this is something to talk about you know it gives that light you know you have the the schedule promotion are coming out and now you have the players that you can look forward to. So the next thing that comes down is just um, the players signing off saying, Hey, we're coming back. So um, when those drops, uh, when those happen and those kind of pick up and people sign on and that kind of stuff, uh, there'll be podcasts like I did a little bit at the beginning of the, the podcast career for the real cats. Um, when new players signed, whatever the case may be, I kind of broke down a little bit to get a, a hold of what the players like that kind of stuff. So I'm still, still working on going back through games, uh, really getting an idea for the real cats. And I'll, I'll have my final, it, it's a long off season for right now. I mean, we got until may, um, I would hopefully start shooting for talking about, the roster for 2023 and what it's looking for probably late February, early March kind of deal. Um, or into April. Um, because I mean, when it comes, it comes quick and it, it, it starts right off the bat. So that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for me. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a like comment and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at railcast talk, retweet it, send it to your friends, whoever wants to be a part where, you know, slowly starting to grow. Sorry about that. I had to cut a little bit of that out. Uh, I was getting in the door opened. My front door flew open, the wind, all that kind of stuff. Dogs started barking. It kind of freaked me out a little bit. Um, so I stopped and went to see what was going on. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you enjoy the podcast, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll try to get back to you as best as I can. If I don't answer you via um, you know, message, comments down below, I'll probably answer you in a certain way. Um, on the podcast kind of answer the question there so if you have questions that you want me to answer on the podcast be sure to you know say hey what are your thoughts on this and blah blah, blah that and I will always interact i like interacting with people it makes it so much fun so um like i said hope you enjoy the rest of your day rest of your evening whenever you're watching this and uh go catch